Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my Formbot Boron Trident Kit. I just want to say I appreciate all the new subscribers. We're over 500 now, which is just amazing. This is going to be the last video on my Voron Trident, uh, at least for a while. I might do a video if I update the tool head to Stealth Burner, but for now the printer is essentially done. I'm just waiting for um, some ABS to come in so I can pr print the last of the hinges and then it will be 100% complete. I do have my LCD all installed there. I have started printing out some of the skirts, that type of thing. Again, absolutely no issues with my Voron kit. It came with everything, there was nothing missing. Um, all the foam tape for the panels was included. All the panels are cut properly, no issues whatsoever. I've been printing a bunch more on this printer, again, no issues. So in this video, we're gonna actually go through the clipper configuration and it's going to be specific to the Voron um, for the Trident uh, Formbot kit. So we're gonna talk about the changes that I made for the actual Trident, um, for the Formbot kit itself. <laughs> so this config will be for the Formbot kit. Something also I wanna note if someone's new to the Voron um, environment, especially with a printer like this, um, I really do recommend you take a look at Super Slicer for your slicer. The reason why I say this is because of how Super Slicer by default starts a print. Now you can change this in Cura with some extra work and things like that. So it's definitely possible. However, Super Slicer is set up already for this. So what I'm talking about is if this printer is fully enclosed, in Cura, your printer, your tool head here would heat up and then it would home. Now that's a big problem because your nozzle is gonna be oozing a little bit and then it's gonna try to home the printer and it's gonna create just a big mess. Um, I got around it using Cura because I didn't have side panels on and I could get my um, flush cutters in there and I could keep on taking off the, the filament that was oozing out, let it home and kind of monitor it as it went. However, if you wanna have this printer fully enclosed and actually use it that way, that's not a really great solution. So the thing I like about Super Slicer is it will home the printer while it's cold first, and then the tool head will stop right here and then warm up, which is really handy because you can just come in here, take off the little blob that ooze, close it, and start printing. So I really like that about Super Slicer, and I want to make sure people are aware of that, is Voron kind of recommends Super Slicer as far as I know. There's a profile made for this printer in Super Slicer. It works awesome, and... Super Slicer's starting G-code is formulated better for a printer that's enclosed like this, where you have all the panels closed. You don't have access to the side of it to try and get the oozing out or anything like that. So I just wanted to mention that. But um, yeah, let's jump over to my computer here and go on the config and uh, we'll finish off the, the Formbot series here. Okay, everyone, let's jump to my computer here and let's take a look at my Trident. So. I am running mainsail. We're going to go into the machine here and we're going to go into the printer config. And I have increased the um, resolution or the zoom here so people hopefully can see the config file a little bit better on my ultra wide. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to record this. But okay, so the very first thing uh, we want to do here is let's take a look at what I have set up. So I do have a separate config file called Kalua underscore macros, which I've included here. That's where some of my macros um, sit. I then have the, the default mainsail stuff here. You do need these for mainsail. I have added a temperature setting for my actual uh, MCU temperature so that I know what temperature my MCU is running at. And then I actually have a um, octoprint option here because I actually in Cura, which I've been using up until a couple days ago, like I said, I switched over to Super Slicer. But um, when I slice something in Cura, there's a button that says upload to Octoprint and I can click that button and it automatically puts my G code right into my mainsail, which is really, really handy. So I have added that. And then I have your standard a uh, pause G code here, resume G code. Um, I, believe, I believe this was already in 
the um, config file that I grabbed right from the uh, Voron guide. And then I have a cancel print here. So this is the ID for my MCU. So I am running um, Clipper off of a laptop. So this is my USB ID for my laptop. These didn't change. This is the standard Voron uh, Trident recommendation. I'm leaving everything as is there. Um, I didn't have to change really anything in here for the X. I did uncomment my build size, which is 250, because this is a 250 for, uh, forum bot kit. Um, again, nothing changed here in X or Y. Um, again, 250 size for my end stops. So if we go down to Z here, there's one very important section. The forum bot kit uses four as a rotation distance. It has a TR8 by four lead screw. So that's very important with, again, the FormBot kit. I don't know what other kits use, but your rotation distance for your Z motors is four. So you can see I put four in there. I have four in all three of my Zs. So that is a very important step. You wanna make sure that that's um, set correctly. For the extruder here, I'm using just the standard afterburner tool head. So I just basically use the um, rotation distance for my um, tool head. Even though you have an afterburner, I very highly recommend still tuning this when you get your printer built. Every printer is slightly different. So even though you're using the Voron afterburner tool head and you're using the BMG gear ratio, definitely still dial this in and calculate your rotation distance. There's a clipper guide on their website on how to do that. It's very easy because this will vary from printer to printer, I've found. Um, I don't believe I've changed really much here. Uh, most of this is just kind of like the standard setup. Same thing for the bed. I haven't really changed anything here. <clears throat> for the probe, this is something to really pay attention to. This is the pin that the FormBot kit uses. It took me a little while to figure out kind of what was the right pin out compared to the Voron like wiring guide and what, even though this is used as the Omron, recommended Omron um, sensor, I still had to kind of play with this a little bit to figure out what the correct pin outs are here because they list a bunch of different ones. So this is what you want it to look like and uncommented as for the FormBot kit. So this is a very important one. I definitely struggled with those, this one a little bit. Um, let's go down here a little bit. <clears throat> Fans, I didn't have to change anything with those. Um, not, I'm not running any LEDs other than my uh, screen. I did have to tweak some of the settings in here um, as far as my build size. Again, I am running the 250 build. So I did uncomment. <clears throat> this is for your Z tilt. So this tells Clipper where the points are on your bed to actually test for Z tilt. And then where kind of the tilt is for your stepper. So how much does Clipper need to go up or down to make it um, do what it wants? So I just uncommented this section here for the 250 build. So pay attention to that. Uh, nothing else more here. So I did uncomment my display section and you do need to uncomment the full section here. So I uncommented the first part here, which is for the mini 12864 display, which is included in your FormBot kit. It's also a NeoPixel display. It is the Big Tree Tech version. So I also uncommented this. And then I also uncommented the bottom part here for the RGB. So I've set mine up to be blue. So I have changed my values here. These are red, green, blue values. So you can change it to whatever colors you want the display to be to match your actual um, <clears throat> colors. I have slightly tweaked my um, print start G code. Um, I took out the home after this. I don't know why you would home after you Z tilt. I just home my X, Y, and Z. I do my Z tilt adjust and I start printing. I don't home again. So I took that out, just saves an extra step. I didn't really uncomment this out yet. Um, I don't really think it's needed. So I've left this as is. I haven't really even tested this. 
So um, again, I just uh, left it as is and it seemed to work just fine. Print end, I haven't changed any of that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of uh, the run through here for the FormBot one. Like I say, pay attention to the probe section that I showed you. Pay attention to the Z rotation distance. I do recommend that you uh, calibrate your rotation distance for your extruder as well, even if you're using the stock um, values. The stock values will get you printing, but definitely do uh, a calibration on that for sure. But uh, yeah, if anyone has any comments, feel free to leave them below. Like I say, this will probably be the last video um, for my FormBot Trident kit for now. I'm going to be focusing on my Simple Cube stuff and I'm going to be focusing on uh, doing a 300 version build of my Simple Cube and things like that. So again, thanks everyone. Uh, I really appreciate all new subscribers and um, definitely leave a like. Thank you.